Annyeong Haseo Wonders, welcome back to We Wonder Korea. Last time I began exploring the absolutely beautiful Incheon Grand Park, but quickly found myself stuck in the middle of a downpour. We pick up as the rain clouds begin to part to explore the rest of the park. Then later I'll take you to a famous international food market in Incheon that hosts an incredible amount of mouth-watering treats. I finally found food, this corn dog. She put sugar and ketchup on it. Very strange combination. But let's see, maybe it's good. Actually, it is very good. I could probably do without the sugar. <laughs> but it's not bad. The rain came again. A lot of people came in. There's not as many now. They already started leaving. There were huge groups of people that came in. One of the guys stood under the umbrella that I'm at. He asked me, he said he wanted to ask me an English question. He just asked me what, what is a school night? He said he read it in a newspaper. Luckily I'm an English teacher so it was very easy to explain. I might go order another corn dog. Maybe without the sugar this time. All right, I found another weather app. It told me that at one, it's supposed to be 70% chance of rain. Right now it's 1251, so we're only nine minutes away from that. And at two, it's down to 10% chance, and then it just goes down from there all day. So the plan right now is to just wait it out in here. I mean, I'm far away from the station. I'm not gonna go through this to go back to the station, especially if it's gonna slow down. Somewhere between one and two, it's gonna slow down or stop completely. I may just need to grab another corn dog. Yeah, I can't even get there now because of the rain. It's so bad. It slows down a little bit. I can go grab another corn dog, eat that, and just wait it out. Eventually, the weather cleared and I could actually explore this park. The truth is, it's massive. It's really hard to convey just how big it is in this video. But remember, it's called Grand Park for a reason. There were a lot of people out enjoying the park while I was there, as it was a Saturday. If you ever find yourself in Incheon, I would highly recommend visiting Incheon Grand Park. I'm so used to Philippines having signs that say the name of the town or city in it. And when I got here and saw this Incheon sign, I'm like, am I in Philippines again? <laughs> I love this as well. It's always love Incheon, except there's a space between all and ways. So maybe I'm actually getting it wrong. But I feel like they were trying to make it so you can line it up and see that. <laughs> I've seen, I don't know that I've seen all of it, but I've seen a lot of this place. It's pretty freaking big. 100% would recommend Incheon Grand Park. You gotta check it out. If you're into parks and nature and this sort of thing and you've got time in your itinerary. Okay, yeah, this is also very gorgeous. I love like the moss growing on the tiles. There's nobody here either. I don't know where everybody went. There's a golden orb weaver. I think that's what it's called right here. Big spider. I can see like three of them right now. They're everywhere in Seoul and Incheon at least, maybe all of Korea. These are the ones that I saw sometimes in the Philippines and freaked out the first time I saw it because it was so big. They're just everywhere here. By the way, guys, I have a question for you. Are you able to tell that I've changed the way I do my filming? I'm really, really curious what you guys Guys think of it if you can even tell the difference I used to always just use this camera and I'd switch lenses now I still use this camera as my main camera but I do a lot like at least probably half the footage is also filmed on my phone it's just so useful I got this iPhone after coming back home from the Philippines and it's really really useful to quickly be able to change focal lengths it's very sharp I don't know can you guys tell at all that like half the footage is filmed on here I think when I'm talking to the camera it's probably more obvious I think the front facing camera on this doesn't look so good especially compared to this camera but with b 
B-roll? I'm really curious if you can even tell. Okay, according to the map, if I continue down this main road, it's gonna circle around and reconnect and eventually take me back to where I came in, which will bring me back to the station. I could go the other way. This way is gonna be a little bit longer, but I wanna check it out, see if there's anything else that I hadn't seen. I mean, it goes down and wraps around. It's beautiful anyway. <laughs> I mean, why not? I'm not in a rush. It's only 2 p.m. This area here is just sculptures, tons of them, all over the place. I don't want to show you all of them. Leave something for you to see when you come here yourself. Yeah, this was beautiful, but the walk back is killing me. My feet feel like they're about to fall off. I mean, most of that's definitely just from yesterday and the day before, running through airports and walking to try to find my Airbnb that took forever. I don't know. I'm hoping my feet and legs are gonna adjust in a few days and get used to all the walking that I'm doing. Of course, in a few days, I'll be cycling, not walking. So it'll be something totally new to adjust to. Fully exhausted, I left the park and took the train to Dong Incheon Station to walk toward a famous food market. I chose this place because Google said it had the best fried chicken in all of Incheon, but I never expected what else was waiting for me once I arrived. Oh man, totally different vibe from where we were earlier. We're actually like in city now. There's so many things for sale and so many tall buildings. So much going on. Totally different than anything I've seen so far. Yeah, this area looks to just be like a huge shopping area. It says Sinpo? I think that's what it said. Sinpo? Oh, Sinpo International Market. There, there, there. That's where the chicken is. Okay, I found the chicken we came for and the line is crazy. I'm definitely gonna wait in it and get it. I have no rush. Before that, I didn't expect there to be so much of this market. So we're gonna look around at the other things first. I don't wanna wait in line and then I'm good, I can wait. The market itself is just one street, but there's so much happening and being sold here. I was honestly a little overwhelmed by all the people, food, and amazing smells in the air. There's so much food I don't recognize like anything. I recognize the corn. <laughs> I don't know what to try. I just came for the chicken. I didn't expect all this. Okay, I saw blueberry cream cheese egg tart. I don't know what it is, but let's try it. Mmm, that is so good. Mmm. They had lots of other flavors too. That's a must try if you come here. This is on the total opposite end from the chicken. They're both on the opposite ends of the market. So in that market, I can hear people speaking many different languages. This must be a much bigger tourist attraction than I realized. Like I mentioned before, I didn't do a ton of research before coming this time. I really wanted to just find things on my own. I did Google best Korean chicken and this is what came up. So that's why we're here, but definitely check this place out if you come to uh, Incheon. All right, the chicken has been received. That line took about 50 minutes, so almost an hour. If it's good, it's worth it. It cost me 17,000, which the conversion is kind of hard for me to do in my head. I'll put it right here. I know it's like take off three zeros and then subtract a little bit. So let's guess around 15. Let's see how close I was. That's not that bad. This is way more than I'd get from like B-dubs back home, which would cost close to this. So we'll take a closer look when we get back. I gotta, it's only for carry out. So I gotta take it back to the Airbnb. Gonna take a while but hopefully it stays warm all right after over an hour finally made it back Let's try one of these chickens well that's just breading try that real quick mm. oh my god that breading is good dude these are like caramelized what is this i thought they'd be soggy but it's literally like caramel on the outside like that's a hard layer and it has bones i thought korean chicken was boneless i mean i don't mind but mm, that's really weird <laughs> 
It's very good. It's very, very good. It's so different than what I was expecting with it being caramelized. Let's go in for a big piece. Mmm. That is really freaking good. Mmm. Definitely not like any chicken I've ever had with how hard the shell is. I'm literally calling it a shell instead of breading. It's so interesting. This is super, super, super good. Doesn't taste like Korean chicken that I remember when I had it before. Maybe this isn't exactly right. I wasn't an international market. I'll definitely try another Korean chicken before I leave and compare. That being said, this is amazing. If you're willing to wait in that line, I bet this is even better when it's fresh. I might pop it in the microwave and reheat it. I mean, it's still got some warmth. The microwave is going to make it soggy, but if it uncaramelizes the sauce, maybe that's a good thing. I don't know. It's like eating candy, candy chicken. It's so weird. We're good. The chicken is actually called Dok Gong Jong. I'm so sorry for my pronunciation. I tried my best. It's one style of Korean fried chicken that's sweeter and thicker than the other, possibly more famous, Yang Yong chicken, which I'll try later in this series. That's why the sauce seems so thick and candy-like when I ate it. I would highly recommend trying both if you get the opportunity. That's it for today's episode. Next time, I hit the grocery store, buy the bike I'll use to cycle the country, and take my first ride through Seoul. Man, it's beautiful. You won't want to miss it. Keep wondering.